Are you ready for the intro? Because I normally jump in. Okay, we'll do a slow. We got this. Good evening, campers. It is me, the Booker Boy, Kira, and this is the delightful Hazel, the official Booker Baby. Oh, hello. People question if the Booker Boy Book Club was still going to be a staple every week, and I assure you, I might be late for some. Oh, shh. Sh so today we are going to be discussing Shuggy Bane by Douglas Stewart. Now, some of you may ask Kieran, where's the dust cover? Where's the dust cover? Why is there no dust cover on it? I am really sorry, Hazel, but I'm an absolute monster. I always take my dust covers off, place them somewhere, and then it's kind of just like a jackpot. <laughs> I know, I know. It's kind of a bit of a potluck like if I find that dust cover. But uh, it, it's gone. People are celebrating how this novel, though bleak, depressing, harrowing at times, is truly an investigation on a parent-child relationship and how people who need to survive really will fall on love and what it means to have hope in a time of need. Ultimately, with all this hype around this book, I was so excited to jump into Shuggy Bane, a novel both heartbreaking yet heartwarming and about a time of place that I feel as though I was able to connect with. Though I'm not Scottish and neither am I from Glasgow where Shuggy Bane is set, I'm still in Britain and my country, Wales, a strong mining country, was devastated by Thatcher's regime. Margaret Thatcher's decision to sell off industries such as coal and steel and privatising them has had long lasting impacts in Britain and I believe they are still prevalent today. People were left without jobs. The men who were meant to bring home the money to their wives and children found themselves completely out of work because by privatising those industries they were bought by companies that could take the labour out of the country to somewhere cheaper. Therefore for men losing their job didn't mean they lost their livelihoods, they lost their lives. Douglas Stewart's depiction of Glasgow is as brutalist as the high-rise city flats. They are as depressing as what the government deems a family can live off a week on pittance rather than benefits. And really what you sense is that everyone who has lost their lives. They have this sour taste in their mouth, which is yeasty. It is full of bile and they can't seem to spit out the words. This is the context. This is the mise-en-scene for Shuggy Bane to enter. At the start of the novel, we see Shuggy Bane working, butchering chicken in order to get money to pay for the accommodation that he is staying in. The accommodation is less than accommodating. He has pervert neighbours, men who want to take advantage of him. And all while we are wondering why Shuggy is in the situation. Yes, the beginning of the novel is the end. And so we go back 11 years, 1981 the start of the story of Shuggy Bane. And as you, and as you read on, you realise that this really isn't Shuggy Bane's story. More so, we are revolving around his mother, Agnes. Now, Agnes Bane is a beautiful woman who catches the eye of everyone she walks past. She styles herself on Elizabeth Taylor. She has her black beehive done immaculately. She has false teeth, yet they're perfectly crisp and white. She wears tight-fitting clothes. She always goes out in heels. Truly, as an aesthetic point, she is gorgeous. She's stunning. She's beautiful. Agnes is proud of her 
appearance. I think it's really interesting if we think about this in today's times. We live in an image saturated world where people want to portray themselves as best as they can, as perfect as they can. And sometimes what we see is not what we expect. Though we might look and think she's this perfect woman or she's this perfect wife, a perfect lover or a perfect parent, really Agnes is riddled with addiction. She's an alcoholic and she'll spend the wages of the family in order to get herself inebriated. She allows her children to clean up her sick, mop up her bile, comfort her during shakes and stay there hoping that she wakes up each time she's passed out. We ourselves might be afflicted with an addiction or we might know loved ones who have addiction, friends who have addiction, and we always want them to find the path to sobriety, a path of success, a path which leads them from the narrow tight walk that they are constantly walking down. Every encounter she makes is a pitfall. Every decision she makes is a pitfall. Society itself is a pitfall. And with all these bumps down the road, there's always a chance she will fall and quickly lap at the waters that will bring her comfort. even at the discomfort of your children. I want to speak for my own personal life. When you're a child growing up with an adult who is an alcoholic, it's very difficult to give up on that person because you love them unconditionally and that you're not really aware of any like other life at all. You're never aware of how it could be different. And this is really what we see with Agnes's three children, Catherine, Leek, and Shuggy. It's only when they grow older and realize the possibilities that people don't act this way or that life doesn't have to be cruel to them, that they decide to move on. Alcoholism is cruel because most often the person who is drunk can't see the logic of the people who are sober. And really what alcoholics are always wanting to do is find control. And no one in this novel has control. People within the novel Shuggy Bane have no control and they are really trying to force down into stereotypes they're trying to force down traditions in order to give their lives substance in order to give them a feeling that they belong in a world that has made them an outcast there are a lot of horrendous and amoral acts that happen within shaggy bay but the people themselves are not horrendous or amoral Exactly. These people are trying to navigate a world that gives them no freedom, gives them no opportunities for them to be themselves. Therefore, in order to give them substance, they degrade others, they use others, they mistreat others in order to give them a sense of achievement. Is that sad to say? Yes. And is it sad to hear? Yes, but these people have been left to the margin, and the margin is poverty. What else can they do? Shuggy Bean is not a happy novel, and neither does it have a happy ending. Really what we are looking at is how far will people go to protect the one they love. Agnes's youngest child, Shuggy, truly goes to the depths of hell with his mum's alcoholism to understand what he needs to do in order to help her. But the answer's not really 
helping her. He needs to help himself first. Shuggy loves his mum and she loves him for who he is and he is different from every boy that we meet in this novel. He's not masculine, he's not into football, he's not interested in girls. He's effeminate, he loves dancing, he wants to be a hairdresser. He's interested in boys. Shuggy's childhood is difficult. Therefore, he wants comfort. He wants solace. He wants a place where he can freely be himself. And he has that at home. So despite his mother drinking herself to death and whittling herself away to disparity with each shot of vodka, with each can of special brew, Shuggy finds comfort in her. Both mother and child know that it's wrong, yet both of them rely on each other because they are the only stable things that they have. They could dream for a better life, but how could they when all hope is gone? Do I go and see mommy? Okay, let's go, let's go. I want everyone to know that I've just put Hazel down to sleep and not that I've recreated chapter 15. <laughs> If you read the book, you'll, you'll know what I mean. So you've heard my thought, you've heard my views and my own personal relationship to the subject matter. So what do I think of this book overall? It's okay. Shuggy Bane feels bloated. Each page turn was heavy to me and that's not really to do with its subject matter albeit we are thrown into a horrific domestic abuse scene at chapter two but to keep the momentum up consistently over 400 pages i think even a master at their craft would struggle. We start off with this climactic crescendo, yet never really have time to fall naturally back into comfort. Instead, we are constantly undulating under this violent tides. And with each act, it seems as though they're trying to overshadow the one that came previous. Therefore, halfway in this book, which is a real turning point, to Agnes's character and her development, I feel as though you become so desensitized so quickly, it just loses its impact. My main criticism of this novel is its pacing. I knew every single time I was going to pick this up and read about six chapters a day, someone was going to be neglected, Someone was going to be sexually assaulted. Uh, and I wouldn't have minded so much reading those bleak scenes had I been emotionally invested in the characters. And for me, Shuggy Bane is quite a forgettable character. His brother and sister equally. I wasn't... They were there. Agnes Bane really does steal the show, but you're left almost numb by the experience, but not in a good way. When someone throws so many punches that you kind of end up soaking them up, it felt like that, but I didn't feel devastated as this book was coming to a close. Is this a good story? Yes, I am not going to say it isn't because it truly is, but is this an enjoyable experience? No, it, its tempo is all off, and really that's what drags it down to me. This just became a chore within the last 200 pages. It's a 6 out of 10 for me. I feel as though I'm in a minority with my opinion, but let me know, Shuggy Bane. Have you read it? Are you interested? Do you agree with me? Do you disagree? Let me know down in the comments. And tune in for next week where we will be discussing The Shadow King by Maza Mengista. I will see you next time. Bye!